may know this NVIDIA's ultra-fast GPU chips are the basis for nearly everything related to AI, but there's a lot more to AI infrastructure than just one company. Take Marvell Technologies. Look, this is formerly a pure play semiconductor company that now also makes advanced network, networking equipment exactly what you need to help data move faster. It gets you better throughout all kinds of hardware. For AI, you need vast quantities of GPUs wired together to increase their overall computing power. And it's Marvell's ultra-fast optical interconnects that make that happen. Now, full disclosure, when these guys reported a little over a month ago, the results were really okay. But listen, even though Marvell's data center business is on fire, other divisions that aren't AI-related did, I think, is much bigger. So that's what we should be focused on. Longer term, the non-data center businesses should come back. But for the time being, we need to ask ourselves if the AI opportunity is big enough to offset the weakness everywhere else. Look, today Marvell hosted the AI era event here in New York where they spelled out the scale of that opportunity in great detail. So it's enough. Let's go straight to the source. Well, Matt Murphy, straight shooting chairman, CEO of Marvell Technology. Find out more. Mr. Murphy, welcome back to Man Money. It's been way too long. It's been way too long to be out here, Jim. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. So, Matt, everyone wants to say, I, look, there's NVIDIA. You know we love NVIDIA. But there's more players than just NVIDIA involved. And when I look yeah. at the total addressable market and I look at what you're doing, I'm thinking you're about as close to NVIDIA as we can get. Yeah, we just had our AI event today, as you mentioned, and we said that we would be the most exposed and levered company to AI, except NVIDIA. our friends at NVIDIA. Now, how is it possible that optical interface could be as big? And what is the total addressable market of AI and then you? Sure, yeah, the, the interconnect, as we call it, or connectivity, yeah. is crucial to the deployment of AI systems. Because if you think about it, all of these computers, GPUs, accelerators, whatever you want to call them, the connective tissue around those computers, those brains, is the connectivity. And it's all driven today by high volume, high reliability optical connections. And so the way to think about it is you've got GPUs that need to communicate right. with each other, uh, clusters that need to talk to each other, communications inside the data center. That's where we come in. So we partner with all of those companies on that. Including, we saw the introduction to Blackwell, their next right. generation comes out in September. I presume you're, you're there too. Yeah, we are involved in our connectivity business, Jim, with every major GPU and accelerator deployment that's occurring today. Okay, so I know that you also have a weaker end market. Uh, that's a very cyclical business. You've been very forward that that is going to look not great. Right. Um, will at what point will we not think about it because you have so much AI? Yeah, great. Let me get that one out of the right. way. So we have some uh, traditional businesses in enterprise and carrier telco right. that, to your point, we were signaling a while back, hey, these are going to go through a cyclical You've been weakness. totally upfront about we that. We were. Right. And, and so we announced those results. We said Q1, which is the quarter we're in, is the bottom. And so we're going to see a recovery off the bottom on those. But just to contextualize it, okay. okay, those two businesses together, kind of at their normal run rate, were a couple of billion dollars. You asked me earlier about the AI opportunity, right. and we had our in Investor Day event today. We outlined a $75 billion total available market for Marvell in data center. Right. Okay, so that opportunity, quite frankly, dwarfs any other opportunity that we have Okay, today. well, that, that presumes meant that you must have more than, say, one or two uh, hyperscaler customers that you work with. We do. We work with all of them. With and all, actually, and we All hyperscalers? All hyperscalers. Okay. And it's not just, so on the connectivity, as I mentioned, we're involved across the board. We're in every okay. deployment. One of our executives today said, in his opening line, we at Marvell, our connectivity chips have helped train every large language model that's ever been trained. Okay, so like today so, so when Andy Jassy was side. talking about large language models, AWS, then you, you're part of that. Yes, all of our connectivity is part of that. And that came, the basis of that, by the way, came from Infi, which was a company we acquired, as you remember in 2020. And you rightly at the time said, this looks like an incredible purchase and it would fit you synergistically. It's been a home run acquisition. Well, well thank you. I mean, in, in fairness, I mean, I'm, I'm tutored by good people. Right, we know some right. of the good people together. Sure, and yeah. what I learned was it wasn't necessarily that you thought this would be as big as it was when you bought it. Well, we didn't know it would be of this magnitude right. because we didn't, we didn't, we knew the AI design wins were right. there. We didn't know how big it would be. 
But the other part of our business, Jim, that's important to talk about when you talk about who we work with and what we do is we also participate in the custom silicon portion of the market. Okay. Where, and what that means is behind the scenes, we work with our customers, large hyperscale customers, to help them develop their own key silicon chips in AI, as an example. Oh, the ones that, ja as, the ones that Jassy talked about, the ones that as, Google as talked about the other day. As their, yeah, so when you see right. those types of announcements, Marvell's typically involved okay. somewhere in that process. Now, right, now, but we got to step back for a second. You know that I have been, and you've helped me, of course, encouraged me to believe how big this can be. Yeah. Now, Wall Street's very skeptical, and they're just saying, you know, like, Jim, you're like pie in the sky. Like, what is with you in this AI? I look at it from talking to someone like you. The orders define me. I'm right. not making right. stuff up. Right. And they wouldn't be ordering. These are sophisticated customers. They wouldn't be ordering unless they had customers that wanted their product. Yeah, we said today in, in my presentation, actually, that absolutely this CapEx build that's happening, right. Right, which was $260 billion of right. data center CapEx last year, makes total sense because there's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity right. to go after in productivity, efficiency, improving businesses, and so forth with the use of AI. So when you put it in that perspective, it makes sense. And by the way, for the data center like total market, which is why you see all these companies doing well and why it's not just a one you know, short-term right. thing, this is projected to be like a $200 billion total opportunity for the semiconductor industry, data center. Now, we're going to address $75 billion of it, but it's enormous. And, and there's real reasons for that. Well, then let, let's go full circle. I think that the reason why the stock was not up, as I thought it might be huge, is because you still cannot say, you know what, the weaker stuff is now turned. And if you had been able to say that, even as it's not that significant, Matt, and you right. and I both know that, then I think the stock would have been up five or six. But people still want to wait for the so-called other shoe, and that's why it's not back to where it was. I don't know what else to say. I, I, thought, I thought it was... You're, look, you're up one, you're up 78% yeah. one yeah. year, so like, I guess we shouldn't be complaining. Right? Yeah, it's been doing okay, but, but I think what I would say is my experience in doing these, whether it's earnings calls, acquisitions, right. investor days, usually, quite frankly, the long-only investors, right, the people right. who really think about right. how to play the stock long-term, sometimes there's a lag effect, okay? Right. And so we never look at these types of events. I mean, we gave a five-year right. outlook today. We did not give a short-term update. And I would say, resoundingly, the feedback today after the event at the lunch right. from, our, from our most strategic long-term investors was home run, opportunities way bigger than we thought. You guys are executing really well. You're winning new customers. You helped us understand the opportunity in Always. detail. And so I feel really good about the event. I'm not looking at today. I think the only thing I heard was that people were hoping I would give a bigger number for next year oh, in AI. Please. And well, that was a... No, you, and, what you gave was realistic numbers, and well, that's well, why... Well, what we said is we're going to grow another billion dollars incremental next year, right. and that was a base floor case for where we would right. be with some upside given the market. So let's leave it at we that. feel really I, good. I, yeah. Let's leave it at that. You're, yeah, I think this was a home run. I agree with yeah. you. That's Matt Murphy, President, Chairman, CEO of Marvell Technology. I think the stock revisits where it was, uh, yes, in the high 80s, low 90s. And money's back in. Right.